Making a living as a music producer seems like the ultimate dream, right? You get to make records all day, you get to go to a bunch of co-writing sessions, hang out with artists, you get to be your own boss, and that might sound like the ultimate goal for so many people. But I think that there are a lot of detriments that people don't really keep in mind when it comes to being a full-time freelance producer, especially if you're your own boss. So in this video, I wanna talk about a few things that people don't consider when they're trying to make a full-time job as a freelancer, and I'm not trying to dissuade anybody from becoming a producer or a songwriter or a freelancer of any kind, but I I've been doing this now for eight years as a freelancer and I've seen dozens of friends do it, try it, some stick with it, some find out it's not for them. And these are some common things that I think come up that nobody really thinks about before you make the decision for this to be your full-time job, basically forever. So we're gonna talk about those things and how to remedy them. But before we do, my name's Austin, you're watching Make Pop Music. We have weekly tutorials on music and music production here. So if you like this, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, that helps us out a ton. Also, if you wanna support our channel, head over to our website, makepopmusic.com. We have sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs, a start to finish production course, tons of free content. Go check that out. There is a link in the description below. Let's talk about some of these things that you might want to keep in mind before you commit to being a full-time freelancer. The first thing that I think a lot of people overlook is that you have to be pretty structured and disciplined. And what I mean by this is you're your own boss now. So if there are days that you don't really feel like working or you don't feel like returning an email, nobody can force you to do that, right? It's one of those things of, there are some personalities that do really, really, really well by themselves. They don't need some kind of external motivator. They don't need a supervisor or a boss or anything like that. And then there are other people that for whatever reason, it could be that they just don't really do well with self-regulating. It could be something like ADHD. It could be somebody that just really doesn't feel like doing the work. For any of those reasons, if you just don't feel like doing work for a week or two at a time, there are going to be people waiting on projects, you're not gonna be pulling in new stuff, and nobody can really force you to work if you're a freelancer. Once you're your own boss, it is all on you. So if you're a person that has trouble with self-motivation or um, you know, keeping a list of things where you're constantly doing them, you're constantly staying on top of them, being a freelancer might not be for you because a lot of this job is just motivating yourself and being disciplined enough to get into the studio, work on sessions, get people their files, get people their emails. I'm not gonna lie, there are days that I do not feel like working. And some days I'll take the day off, I'll just communicate that with whoever may be expecting something. But a lot of those days, tough luck. I have to get my ass in the studio because there are people waiting on new versions. There are people waiting on contracts and invoices. And I don't have somebody telling me, hey, Austin, you have to go do this today. Like if I was at a job working my nine to five, if I don't do my job, I get fired, right? Being a freelancer, you'll still get fired, but it looks a little bit different. It's not so urgent. It's not so violent. It's one of those things where you'll start to realize my business is fizzling out. I don't really know why I'm having trouble keeping projects on the books. And it's probably because you're having a really, really, really hard time staying on top of things. So if this is one thing that you don't really excel in, think twice or maybe think about, you know, hiring something like a manager or hiring some kind of agent where they can help you with the booking. They can help stay on top of you. They can make your schedule for you because if you don't have that, it's a lot of time figuring out what you have to do every day and staying on top of it. So if you have trouble with it, just think twice about being your own boss. The second thing that most people don't realize when they go freelance and when they start trying to produce or write or anything music related full time, even photographers, vi videographers, anybody, any kind of creative, you're gonna have to work on a lot of projects that you are not 100% in love with. So there's gonna be a time in every major successful producer's career where you cross that threshold and now you're to the point where I only work with the biggest people. I only work on projects that I love. I only work on something if I'm vibing with it. And that's the goal, right? We all wanna get there. But for 95% of producers, mixing engineers, uh, you know, recording engineers, we have to work on things that we might not be 100% obsessed with because we have bills to pay and there's nothing wrong with taking a job that you're not 1 million percent into creatively, but you can still give them a very, very good song. So this is one of those fine lines of if you absolutely hate something, if you absolutely do not fuck with that artist or do not see the vision, of course, don't take it. They're going to get a bad product. You're going to have a horrible time doing it. It's not going to be a, a good idea at all. But there's going to be a lot of things that kind of fall in the middle where it's like, okay, I can work on this for a week or two. I can do a pretty good job. I can deliver it, but it doesn't, you know, speak to my soul. It's not something that I'm just going to always want in my catalog, always want to show off. And that is fine. As a freelancer, you're going to have to take so many projects to pay your bills. Not every single one of them is going to be, you know, top of the portfolio, charting everywhere, artists that you had these like, you know, 10 year long relationships with. And that's okay. Don't get down on yourself if you find that you're just taking some work here and there because you have to keep the books full. Everybody does it. I know a lot of people want to pretend like they only keep their books full with like the coolest projects ever, but I promise you if they're making a living off of this and they're not working on major, major, major stuff, 
They're probably taking some stuff just to fill the books, and that is okay. The most important thing is that you still deliver a really, really good song, right? That artist is still paying you to do a service. Do that service to the best of your ability, even if it's not something that is, you know, your creative muse. So just keep that in mind. The third thing that people don't really keep in mind is that you have to spend a lot of time promoting yourself if you want to be a freelancer. This is a little bit different if you're on like a publishing deal or you have a manager where they do a lot of that networking for you. But if you're a freelancer and you're self-employed and it's your job to get your name out there, you do have to spend time promoting. You have to, you know, be on Instagram, be on TikTok, connecting with artists at local shows. You have to be finding people that want to work with you. Constantly try to showcase your skills, right? If you are a freelance producer, there should be nobody that follows you on Instagram or that knows you in real life that does not know you're a producer because you have to make it known. You have to be advertising yourself. You have to be showing your skill case. You have to be networking with people because if you're not, somebody else is. And if you can't make it known to the world that, hey, I'm a producer, this is what my production sound like, this is why you should hire me, you're gonna have an impossible time keeping your books full and kind of always moving up to that next level. It's just one of those things of like, most people who do production don't necessarily want to be like an influencer. They don't necessarily want to be making TikToks or reels every day. But I'm sorry if your books are not full, you should be filling that calendar day with something that could bring in something that would fill the books, right? So if for some reason my books weren't full for the next month, I'm going to spend a few days making some content. I'm going to make a couple cool, you know, creative production videos that I can throw online. Maybe I'm going to remix a song that I can throw on TikTok. Maybe I'm going to, you know, go out to a show and offer to remix a band for free or record a band for free. There are all these things that you can do to promote yourself that it takes a really specific kind of person to do that. And a lot of the people that are massively creative that I see, they do amazing productions. They sonically are really, really dialed in. They're cool people to hang with. They're a fun hang. They just don't have that gene where they can go out and they can promote themselves. They can pitch themselves. They can be comfortable telling people what they do and having people hire them. So if you find it really, really hard to promote yourself or to uh, basically just market your material, you might want to look at going an alternate route. So doing something like a publishing deal where you're much more behind the scenes or having something like a manager where they can connect with artists and figure out how to keep your book full. Granted, both of those things take quite a bit of your income. So unless they're going to bring in a shit ton more work, they're probably going to take more than it might be worth for you if you're a small producer. So if you can do it yourself, you can keep 100% of your revenue. I'm not on a pub deal. I don't have a manager. I've been offered both, but I like promoting myself. I have no problem making content. I have no problem keeping my books full. So I'm not gonna give up a big percentage just so somebody else can do the work that I've already been doing for seven years. Granted, if I was having a really, really tough time, sure, hire somebody out because it might not be your skill set. So just keep that in mind. The fourth thing that I think people overlook is that at least for the first several years, you are pretty much always on the clock. If you're still having trouble keeping your books full and you're trying to make the most out of every project, you're gonna get emails in the middle of the night. You're gonna have people asking for stems at seven o'clock in the morning. You're gonna have people that wanna do sessions on Saturdays. And it can be really, really hard to set boundaries with artists when you're worried about constantly keeping your books full because if you're just taking whatever you can get, you have to be flexible. So keep in mind that you are always going to be on the clock, at least for a first little while. And even if you've set those boundaries, you're still gonna feel like you need to always be on the clock. So even now, I have my books always full. I've always got stuff going on. I am not desperate for projects whatsoever. But if I have somebody email me at eight o'clock at night after I've just had dinner with Miranda, I still feel like I need to shoot them a text back. It took me years to finally set a boundary to say, I will not message people after 6 p.m. because that's when I'm off. I'll message them the next day when I get in, but unless it's something really urgent or it's something that I would just rather answer immediately, they cannot expect an answer from me because that's my hours. It's one of those things of you are running a business. We'll talk about this a little bit more a little later, but you have to have those boundaries. And if you can't, then you have to be okay always being on the clock. You have to be okay going to 2 a.m. sessions. You have to be okay with people trying to fly in on a Saturday and record at your house. If you're trying to do this as a freelancer for a long time, you're going to take whatever you can get because that's what pays the bills. It's what we go back to with point two of you're not going to always love everything. Everything's not going to be a perfect fit. It's not going to always be the timeline that you want or the artist that you want or the workflow that you want. So, you know, you might be on the clock all the time. So if you're a person that is tired of a nine to five, 40 hour a week job, be prepared to work 60 or 70 if you're a freelancer, because if you're not in a session, because you're not fully booked, you should always be trying to get a session. I think for probably like the first three or four years I was a freelancer, I worked like 70 hours a week. I was basically always working, either talking to people on social media or making content or producing songs or making stuff for myself or just trying to learn new things and get better. 
there's a lot of time that goes in. Granted, I love doing it. I love making music. But like we said with point one, some days you just don't want to do it and you have to still do it. The fifth thing that I want to talk about is being organized and realizing that there are tons of other tasks besides just producing. So you're going to have all of your administrative work. So contracts, invoices, split sheet agreements, registering everything to your publishers and producers when a song comes out. All of that takes quite a bit of time. You're going to have consultation calls with clients. You're going to spend a lot of time sending files back and forth to clients. I would say that out of a 40 hour production work week, I am surprised if people are actually producing more than 30 hours of that. The other 10 hours are going to be communication, admin work, registering things, bouncing out files. I talked about this a little bit in our rates video. These are things that need to be included in your rate. There's a lot of time that goes back and forth doing things besides just production. And yes, managers can help with that. Yes, assistants can help with that. But if you're just getting started and you're trying to keep your books full and you're trying to make a living, maybe you don't wanna be giving 20% off the top. Maybe you can't afford to pay an assistant $700 a week to help you out. So you have to be prepared to do those things, stay organized, stay on top of contracts, invoices, bookings, all kind of stuff like that. Also, when it comes to the end of the year, you have to take care of things like taxes. If you're a freelancer, you should be saving basically 25 to 30% of everything you make all year to give to taxes. Like if you make a hundred grand before write-offs, you should be prepared to give 30 grand of that at the end of the year to the IRS, especially in the United States. It differs depending on what state you're in. I'm in Florida, we don't have state taxes here. And even here, they are ruthless. So if you're a freelancer, keep in mind putting things aside for taxes, putting things aside for savings, doing your booking, doing your management. It's a lot. Like a lot of people I think want to produce every day because they like making music and they like producing and they like working with artists. And if you can be under a pub deal or you can have a management or you can, you know, have it set up to where you have a team to handle all that other shit, all you have to do is hop into a session and make stuff great, more power to you. Most people will not be in that situation. So if you're on your own trying to freelance, keep in mind that so much of your time is spent outside of your DAW doing shit that you probably don't want to do. It's probably not really even in your wheelhouse. You just have to learn how to do it and just do it. The last thing that I want to talk about, we kind of mentioned this earlier, is recognizing yourself as a business. So this is a really weird thing that almost everybody that I know that's ever been freelance, even me, had a really tough time with at first is you think of yourself as a person first and then as like a musical producer, writer, musician, second. And then a lot of people don't realize that when you're doing this for a living, you are a business. So like I said earlier, you have to be strict with your terms. You have to lay down you know, guidelines. If somebody's disrespecting you, you have to be able to step in and say, look, I know you're paying me to do this project, but like, you cannot talk to me like that. I'm still a person, I am a business. It's weird, it's this weird dichotomy of, you're gonna have people that pay you that think that they own you because they paid you X, Y, Z amount of money for a project. And you have to step in and you have to tell them, I'm a person. And then on the other end, you're gonna have people that see you as a friend, see you as a colleague, that wanna get free shit from them. So you have to step in and you have to tell them, I'm a business. It's really weird to balance helping out people with hookup rates and free projects and making sure that you charge, you know, random people that you don't know a very, very appropriate amount for the work that you do. It's this weird dichotomy of there's always gonna be people that wanna pay less and get more from you, and there's always gonna be people that don't mind paying for you, but they think that that gives them this weird entitlement to run the project, disrespect you, step all over you, break boundaries. So you have to be okay kind of stepping in and putting both of those people in their place. On top of that, like I said earlier, you have to be okay with promoting yourself. You have to be able to kind of just disregard what people say about you negatively. They're gonna have negative opinions. There's gonna be people that watch this exact video and just fucking go off on me in the comments for no reason. They don't know who I am, They've never met me. They don't know that I'm doing these videos to try to help people. But for some reason, I've pissed them off and they're gonna have an opinion. And that's fine with me. It took me years to be able to recognize like, I have tried pillows that I didn't like from Target and it's okay that I don't like those. I don't have anything against them. I just don't like them. There's gonna be people like that with your productions, with your mixing, with your personality. You can't take it personally. You are a person, you are a business, and you have to kind of find that fine line of where you can put people in their place, where you can you know, deliver customer service because everybody wants a good experience, but you can't do that at the detriment of running your own business or your own mental health into the ground. So hopefully you can find out what that looks like in your scenario. I know that I've had to put down rules in the past where I don't record friends and family for free anymore. I won't you know, give people hookup rates unless it's something that I just really wanna do and I have some spare time. And it's awkward, it's weird, but at the same time, 
I wouldn't go to Target and say that, hey, I know a cashier, I'm expecting to get half off of a TV, right? It just doesn't work like that. So good luck trying to run a business. It can be tough. With that said, if you can run a freelance production business, I do think it is one of the most rewarding things in the world. You get to be your own boss. I got to go to Italy for two weeks with my wife this year. I still made money because we had, you know, make pop music, obviously selling samples and presets in the back end. I had projects still getting booked up for when I came back. It can be amazing to have that kind of flexibility. But with that said, if there's a slow month, then tough shit on me. I don't have steady income coming in. So be diligent about you know saving stuff, doing your taxes, keeping your books filled, staying on top of projects. Give everybody a really good experience when they work with you. And if you can do all of those and then you can handle the things like the you know marketing yourself, the booking, all of the different admin stuff, you're going to be fine. But if all of that stuff scares you, think about it twice before you commit to leaving your job, doing this full time, because there is a lot of shit that goes into just making music, especially if you're the one that is responsible for the whole project at the end of the day. With that said, if I missed anything that you think the other freelancers should know, if you've been doing this for a while and there are tips that you wanna leave, leave those down in the comments. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll try to answer as many as possible, but hopefully you liked this video. Hopefully it helped you at least realize some of the things that come along with being a producer. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. That helps us out a ton. If you wanna support us, please head over to our website, makepopmusic.com. We have a ton of free content over there. We also have sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs, a start to finish production course where we do talk about handling things like all of those contracts and invoices and communicating with a client and actually handling a project in real time. So if you want to see what it looks like for a freelancer to do a project from start to finish, that course, I swear to God, will tell you everything that I do when I'm working with a client. So go check that out. Other than that, that's going to do it for this video. I'll see you guys next week with more content, but until then, much love everyone. Peace.